in the fifth chapter, this is not in your handout, this is a book <laughs> Benny, uh, Galatians 5 talks about the um, sinful acts of the flesh mm -hmm. and then the fruit of the spirit. And it juxtaposes really what is a mindset and what is a God mindset, if you will. So in the, um, I call them the rotten apples, as a contrast to the good fruit. The rotten apples include hatred, jealousy, rivalry, as well as immorality, et cetera, et cetera. So that is what God's voice is not. Not. So it's not, not, not. We don't want these. All right. Now, let's do what God's voice is. So again, those of you who want to be sword bearers, somebody look up John 10, 10b. Um, somebody look up Psalm 85, 8. 85, 8. John. Colossians 3, 15. That's Dan, right? Yeah. Um, Proverbs 1, 33. Josh. And Proverbs 8, 34. Elma again. All right, so let's write these down. So let's take it from the top. Who, who's number one? I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Thank you. So we know that if something is being said to us that has to do with abundance, it is from God. Who's number two? Well, number two, Psalm 85, 8. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, or he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. So he's speaking peace. Mm -hmm. There's somebody else who had peace. Who had Colossians 3.15? Damn. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Okay, and the last one? Proverbs 8, verse 34. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. Blessed. 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 Love it. In case you don't know who's going to be blessed, by the way, read Matthew 5, which is the Beatitudes. And you know what blessed means? It's not just a picture of, hey, you're going to be happy, good job, girl. It's a matter of God really favoring you. I think actually the picture is some God coming and kneeling in front of you, Alma, and saying, I bless you. I'm going to kiss you. You are my daughter. I'm going to give you this. Isn't that a beautiful Isn't picture? That's what blesses blessing. you. What? The Father's blessing. Like yeah. Yep. the first one. Typically. Yep. And sometimes um, the Amplified will say, blessed, fortunate, and to the envy. Did you hear that? Blessed, fortunate, and to the envy. So when we have trouble figuring out whether we are prepared to listen to God, ask yourself, is your amplifier tuned in to this? And there's so much more, guys. The whole scripture is full of this. We could have taken hours on this one. Uh, but is it tuned into this or not? And if it's not, what do you do? Exhale. Exhale. Confess. Unplug. Change your mind. Move on. Get rid of the toxicity. Make a decision for life and not for death, which we heard from Josh this morning. Okay. Um, so this, this basically is the relationship of the child to the father, that we are going to count on being um, right in position, we're going to count on being prepared, and we're going to be in the right place. Okay? Now let's switch it. And we're now talking about what the father is going to give us. Top of five. Top of five. Okay, so what is the father? What were my three P's? Protection. Protection, yeah, what else? Space. No, provision. Provision. provision, what else? Partnership. Partnership. Okay, let's take a look at that for a minute. God need to protect us from the enemy. The enemy, ourselves. Okay. right? Ourselves. ourselves. Um, just a basic comment on how God is going to protect us. In John 16:33, He says, "I have overcome the world." What more can I say about that? I could give you tons of scriptures because the whole Bible is full of scriptures. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we ended with the Hoyt team. Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that is an example of God providing protection for us. Now, what do we know about God providing, per, just simply providing for us, actually? What are the types of provisions that God gives us? Do you have any idea? Food. We can look up these scriptures. Food. What? Food. Food. Right. Clothing. Clothing. Yep. 
what? Shelter. 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 Okay. <coughs> Spiritual gifts. Let's look up, somebody look up 2 um, Corinthians 9 8. Who would like to do that? 2 Corinthians 9 8. Josh is going to do that for me. Thank you, Josh. Um, who would like to look up Deuteronomy 429? Sure. Sure? David? Did you say sure? Yep. Okay. Who would like to look up Matthew 6 4? Joanna, thank you. And who, I'm, I'm going to look up um, Proverbs 20 12 from the Passion. So, bear with me. And I forgot to ask somebody to look up Matthew 6 11, but that's basically, I think it's um, Mansion Not. No, it's not. I can do that too if you want. Okay, okay. I'm in Matthew you got that. Already. Okay, Matthew 6 11. What's that one, Joanna? Can you get that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, right now. Okay, Matthew 6 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Well, there you go. Give us this day our daily bread. I should have known that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so yeah. basic. Um, and I guess in my mind, to be honest with you, Allison mentioned food, and that's absolutely true. But I want you to realize, folks, that in the midst of everything, daily spiritual food is crucial. How many of you guys drive a car? Not everybody. You guys don't drive cars? Oh, okay. What was the question? Yeah, what I'm, you're, you're sleeping on there. Huh? <laughs> you don't raise your hand. Okay. So half, most of the room is driving a car. How many of you regularly stop at the gas station and fill up your tank? Why? A car won't work. Because you can't drive if you don't fill your tank up. Well, let me give you a very basic clue. If you're not getting into the Word of God every day, somehow listening to it, reading it, talking about it, you're emptying, your gas tank is getting emptier and emptier. Yes, Dan? Just uh, go to the Word during Christ's temptation. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Perfect. Did you all hear that? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let's see. That's Matthew 6, 11. Who's going to do 2 Corinthians 9, 8? Okay. And God is able to make all grace overflow to you, so that by always having enough of everything, you may overflow in every good work. Okay. Grace abundantly. God is a grace giver. We have no excuse except... God loves to have us ask. By the way, one of the biggest things I've learned in the last year or two is the pleasure he gets in my going give me help me I want more please so if you hadn't said if you have not prayed that way in the last week or two please remember just something like Jesus help more please hi give me something okay you're all he loves that so that's just a basic there who is doing Deuteronomy 429 what if but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and all with all your soul. So what are we going to find? Him. We're going to find him. And I'm going to jump to the Proverbs 12, uh, 20, 12, I'm sorry, 20, 12 in the Passion Translation. The lovers of God have been given eyes to see with spiritual discernment and ears to hear from God. Given eyes to see with spiritual discernment and ears to hear from God. I have a lot of clients that say to me, I don't get into the Word, I don't have enough time. And I'll challenge them that. And I actually have a Bible study guide that's a seven minute Bible study guide. So if you guys want to know what that is, it's very simple. It's the GPS Bible study guide. I'll write it out for you. This is a Benny, this is not on your outline, Allison. GPS. You read any short passage of Scripture. And you say to yourself, what does it teach me about God, G? You say, what does the same set teach me about a provision or a promise? And what does this teach me about myself? And you can have a very rich and meaty quiet time in seven minutes if you hang on to those ideas. Now, sometimes I've shared this with my clients and they say, yeah, but I don't always understand. I don't always hear. I don't get it. Or, it doesn't make sense. And apart from the fact that nowadays a lot of people are not reading as much as they used to, we now fortunately have um, audio apps and narratives, so there's no real excuse if you can't read, you can at least hear, okay? Um, so I'm just going to challenge you that God has said right here in um, 
Proverbs 20, 12, and he's given us both ears and eyes. So what excuse do you have out here? Okay. All right, and Julie, I'm skipping it. Yes. Mention quickly again the BLB. Just put BLB up there and tell them what the BLB is. The okay. Blue letter by the Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, I have been using an app on my phone, the Blue Letter Bible. Has anybody heard of it besides me? No? no? Okay. You have. Great. Do you like it, Andy? I've just heard of it. I haven't used it. Okay. It's a um, app. I think you can go to that.com. I, I think it didn't cost me anything. If it did, it was only $9.99 or something. It's free for us. It's free. It's free. For us to download the app. Oh, okay. Cool. So what this allows us to do, and, and you'll hear me chat about vocabulary because I just have such fun with it, but that actually gives me a tran an interlinear translation of the uh, meaning of the word. So when I was studying the secret place of God, I looked up secret because I was trying to understand what it meant, and that's where I got the word Sethar. And that it shows me all the places in scripture where Seth are. Am I pronouncing that right? Anybody Hebrew um, guru here? Okay. No, but it has a pronunciation thing. You could Very learn. good. Well, why don't you, do you have your phone with you? No, but I, don't, I can't get on my phone. <laughs> okay. Um, at any rate, um, it then allows you to see all the places that Sethar is listed, and that's where I discovered that Joseph was put in a Sethar, and the secret place of the Almighty is a Sethar, and the privy that one of the kings went to the bathroom in is a Sethar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And womb, I forgot to mention this, is also used as a hollow place that a place can set in. And Psalm 139 talks about the baby being in the womb, and that's the first secret place where love and nurturing starts to come to us from the Heavenly Father. So I think that's just terrific. Um, okay, the last thing we want to look at is partnership. And there are some scriptures here. Um, I'm going to, because of time, frankly, I'm just going to read through them. Um, one of the exciting things for me is when, when I was thinking about partnership is what does that really look like? And the concept is having a face-to-face -face encounter with God. And the Hebrew for face-to-face -face is panim, P-A-N-I-Y-M, which is a lot more than Steve and me just having eye contact. We have face-to-face -face contact right now. But if he was a furnace of energy, of radiant love, of, of a cloud of fire, he could, con he could surround me. And that's his panim. If you look up the word panim throughout scripture, it is the surrounding presence of God, wow. not just the face-to-face. -face. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, there is, I can give the scriptures, I think, in your outline tell us that. But remember when um, Moses was up in the mountain, Exodus 17, 6, the Lord said, Behold, I'll stand before you there on the rock. And apparently it was the elders of Israel were saying that the panim was surrounding them. And Allison is going to read for me something that was uh, written by Sarah Young and Jesus Calling. And I don't, how many of you are familiar with Sarah Young and uh, <coughs> Jesus Calling? If anybody needs a good devotional, that is an option for you. Um, so she just, Sarah Young, just this past week, wrote a very lovely section about being in the presence of God. So I'll let you read that out. I would encourage you to really close your eyes and just uh, allow these words to minister to you. Let my love enfold you in the radiance of my glory. Sit still in the light of my presence and receive my peace. These quiet moments with me transcend time, accomplishing far more than you can imagine. Bring me the sacrifice of your time and watch to see how abundantly I bless you and your loved ones. Through the intimacy of our relationship, you are being transformed from the inside out. As you keep your focus on me, I form you into the one I desire you to be. Your part is to yield to my creative work in you, neither resisting it nor trying to speed it up. Enjoy the tempo of a God-breathed life by letting me set the pace. Hold my hand in childlike trust. 
and the way before you will open up step by step. I need to put the sticky things up on the thing so behind the screen. Can we pull the screen? Oh yeah. Okay. While Steve's just doing a, um, a thing there, I just want to um, back up here for a minute. So we've been talking about partnership, and uh, one of the things I want you to remember is that we are in partnership in a way that is called a covenant relationship. You know, the Old Testament could be called the Old Covenant, and the New Testament be, could be called the New Covenant. Um, and I've learned in the last year that covenant is a lot more than simply a legal contract. It is as profound as a betrothal ceremony with a person. We are in covenant with God, and that, that's a whole other, that should be something that His um, Presence Fellowship studies, because in a nutshell, <clears throat> I'm in a partnership with an almighty God who has said, Julie, what is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. What is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. That's the nature of the covenant. That is loaded. That is powerful. I wake up in the morning, and at some point in the first half hour of the day, I'm saying, God, thank you that what is mine is yours. And I give him my house and my dogs and my life and my clients and whatever. And then I say, thank you that what is yours is mine. <laughs> you know, long, 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 long. The thing about a covenant is it's also unidirectional. So God, his covenant to us is unconditional. He's given us what he gives us. And it's our choice to covenant with him the other one, right? So it's, yeah. So we're going to move on. Now let me make a comment. I don't, we're not going to take a formal break this afternoon. And so if anybody needs to use the bathroom or wants to stretch their legs, this is probably a good time to do it. We're going to segue into the second part of the afternoon, uh, which has to do with the divine exchange. And so, yes, David. Uh, I have a quick question. You're welcome to say this is a rabbit hole area. It says in the Psalms, it says, seek my face, seek his face continually. And several places it says, seek his face. And when you're talking about partnership, I, you know, I think, well, maybe that's similar. But I don't know quite what that means, because it's in the Hebrew somewhere. Well, uh, and I don't have, I could look it up. But let's well, assume, let's later. assume that the word face is the penim. And it may not be, because it's not, a Hebrew has multiple meanings. But because so often face is translated from the Hebrew as penim, that's the Hebrew. Um, let's assume it says, seek my presence, seek my surrounding power, seek my radiant energy, you know? Um, I sometimes wish I was Wonder Woman to do that, my glass of people and be in that, you know. Um, that powerful, if I can use a superhero metaphor, God has made us superheroes. I don't want to sound presumptive here, but and that's only through the blood of Christ. That has nothing to do with me. It has to do with my willingness to say, you clothe me with your blood so I can be an invincible soldier in your kingdom. Yes, Laura. Well, that's interesting. It's in Romans 5, I think it is, verse 1. It says the word um, that we've been put, put together with Christ, the word pros ton, is actually face to face with which means that we would be, through grace, put face-to-face -face again with Jesus through the grace of reconciliation. That's beautiful. I yeah. hope the camera heard it. Face-to-face, -face, Romans 5.1, face-to-face yeah. -face with Jesus. Yeah. And that's, that's a great segue into what we're doing. So if you'll help me out. Just grab those two drawings sure. and stick them up behind me to help. One of the um, positive experiences, again, with taking the CHCP course was... Um, being given a new verse, and this was, I had heard these verses before, but I had never applied them to the problem of identity. Remember, we're here today to talk about a shattered identity. Um, fortunately for me, I haven't had a lot of shatterings of my body during my 70 years, but I have had a lot of shatterings of my personality. So when I heard someone speak, and I think it was Ben Williams, who's a Global Awakening staff, um, he, he shared two verses, and I'm going to read them to you. Um, can I write on that? Is that going to be firm enough for me to write on uh, Probably not. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Isaiah 52.14. Isaiah 52.14 in the New Living Translation. Papa 6. Thank you. Reads. 
His face was so disfigured, mm -hmm. he seemed hardly human. Mm -hmm. And from his appearance, one could scarcely know mm -hmm. he was a man. Mm -hmm. Let me reread that. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, one could scarcely know he was a man. Let me also read Isaiah 53, 3. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. So he's a man of suffering and of pain and people hid their faces from him. Now I have clients sit in front of me who are very distraught psychologically to the point where sometimes they don't seem human, if I can kind of say that, I don't mean it in a terrible way, but they're so shattered, they're so ripped up, they're so confused that it's, it's like we've got to get them from here over to here just for them to be able to sit comfortably in my office and tell me who they are and where they want to go. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. So when I heard this idea, I began to apply it, or whoever I was listening to, I think again it was Bill, um, Ben Williams. Um, whenever I have thought about what did Jesus do for me at this point in my life, I'm thinking about his shattered visage, his shattered countenance, is not just about my body, which physical healing courses teach, but it's about my shattered emotional core. So what I want to do is talk about um, the crucifixion and how Jesus was injured. And I do need you guys to do a little bit of homework. And I think these verses are in your outline, but if not, I'll give them to you. Um, thank you. I am pretty much done. We're gonna, I'm going to step over here. So David, if you want to slide those, can you just slide them over there so I don't have to trip on them? Thank you. So here are some verses. So anybody who's interested, if I read out a verse, this is all about the um, depiction of the crucifixion, both from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And our job is going to be to read these passages and then really get our heads around what happened to Jesus physically and then how what happened to Jesus physically correlates with what has happened to us emotionally. That's where we're headed. So the verses I need you to look up is um, Isaiah 56. Anybody want to volunteer for that? Is everybody falling asleep? Should we send more chocolate around, guys? <laughs> Seriously, did the bowl stop? Okay, put them on again. <laughs> um, we got the, are these the nuts or the plain ones? Anyway, who would like to do Isaiah 56? 50, colon 6, thank you. Um, Allison, do you want to do Isaiah 52, 13? Mm -hmm. David, can you do 53, 1 through 9? And, th and when I say do it, you guys are not going to read it out loud. You're going to highlight in your head what happened to Jesus in that passage. Are you with me on that? So you can cut through, the, cut through all the words that don't have to do with his um, torturing and physical injuries. Josh, can you do Matthew 26, 57 through 67, please? Um, and can you do Matthew 27, 11 through 56? That's a long section, but see if you can just pull the verbs out, okay? Um, and Dan, can you do Luke 22, 63 through Luke 23, 49? And is it John? John? Are you with? No, I'm not doing anything. Okay. I don't have my Bible. Okay. Fine. I'll do John 19. Okay, John 19. Okay. So uh, let's just, if anybody wants to look those references up, I believe I've left them in the outline, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's where we're going to, guys, take just two or three minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hone in on Thank what you. happened to Jesus' body because of the torture he sustained. So what happened to Jesus' body or what he's done for us? Is no, just what happened to Jesus' body. We're going to do what he did, how his injuries were exchanged for what we needed later. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's just the physical injury. You know, pierced, whatever, scourged. Whatever. And what part of the body did, he, did they do it on?
scriptures. That's, I'm going to call them hits because there are a variety of ways that he was abused. So Jen, what did you come up with? His back was struck. Okay, hang on. This is a spinal column, by the way, if you can't tell. So this was struck. Yep, go ahead. His beard was pulled out of his cheeks. His face was disgraced and spit upon. Okay. Allie, did you do anything? Uh, his appearance was marred more than any man. This is 14, verse 52, 14, not 13. And his form uh, more than any, any other person. Okay, so basically, given that, it's just a general summary. How many of you have seen The Passion? Okay, so you know what we're talking about. If you haven't seen The Passion, and the Lord calls you to really have you understand what he went through, I'd highly suggest you see it. It's a tough, true, accurate, heart-rendering movie. David? See, in terms of uh, physical things, he was pierced uh, through or crushed. Okay, let's talk pierced. So we know he was pierced in his hands and pierced in his side. And his feet. And his feet, yep. He was scourged. Just a second, we've got to do crushed. Crushed. What, they took a rod to him. Who had the section about the rod? Man made it. I don't know. Did you have a rod? I just said scorching. Okay, okay. Well, he was crushed. So what was the other thing you said after that? He was scourged. Okay, scourged is, you all know what the scourging is? It's a whipping, but the whip is not just rawhide. It's got glass and metal barbs in it. And so he was, his skin was lashed and mm -hmm. scourged, so scourged. Okay, is there anything else, David, in your set? Uh, physically, the Lord caused all the iniquity to fall on him. <coughs> right, so, and I, don't, I can't even depict that. Yeah, right. We'll have to hold that thought. That's the bottom line for today. All 